Hey everyone, today we are going to look at how to render an object to give the appearance of glass. Now glass is a material that's classified by engineers under the category for ceramics. Ceramics is one of only four classifications given to materials. These are ceramics, plastics, metals, and composites. So that can mean a mixture of all three other categories. Glass is often referred to as vitreous, which means that it's clear, hard, durable, and easy to cut. When we're looking at technology glass, which you can see here, it is made to be particularly durable. The durability of these types of glass has improved to such a point where now modern Gorilla Glass can have a drop rating of up to two meters before it breaks. I've also got a sample of a Pyrex dish. This is a very durable glass that can go in the oven and withstand very, very high heats. And a nice little perfume bottle, which is very cute, made from glass. You'll see it used a glass containers in cosmetics and food products around the house. And then also some scientific, nice scientific products like a magnifying glass we find um, quite fascinating how the glass is curved and can make something appear bigger. Now, jumping in, we are going to draw this uh, rendered cube today so that it can look like glass. And then you can go off and um, make colored glass or you can design a product that you might like. Um, I'm going to focus on doing a perfume bottle, but you might choose something else. We are going to simply use um, some lead pencils, a black marker, or you can use a very sharp black pencil. Particularly if you're using like a brown butcher's paper or colored paper, you can use some nice soft pastels like this. I use a little bit of card like this as a mask. So when I'm actually shading or rubbing out. So there's three simple steps to drawing a cube with a splat. We trace down the middle line from blip to blip around the outside. The lower part of the splat. And then the second step is to slide that up simply, draw in these bottom two angled lines. Note, I'm not bringing my pencil all the way in. And then on the top, and there we have our cube. Here, this part reflects light and is often not seen. Um, it's the closest point to you um, and it reflects the light. So we'll be making sure that that section is not actually completely drawn in. So, um, so don't worry about your lines meeting up perfectly. Again, we're not worried if the, um, the lines aren't touching. These are guidelines and you'll understand when we finish why that's important. So if we can continue to do that, we're also going to be required to drop a line down at the back so that we can see. Again, I'm not going all the way. And we're also going to have to draw in the base of the cube, as you can see here. So these two lines here. So you can simply rotate your splat upside down and, um, and lightly draw those lines into the corner. Now, when we do it in this image, you'll see that they're thicker and they go lighter. So come to this side and make sure that you put your thickness lines in. Great. Try and make them as even as you can. Um, just take a moment and double check that it's reasonably even around. Most containers around the house you'll see will have an even thickness.
Now I'm going to speed up this next part of the video but I'm going to keep this image here so you can see what I'm doing and as discussed please make sure that your lines taper off as you um, fill in the black sections and we have some gaps. Once we've done that we are going to um, erase the rest of the pencil that's left in the drawing. So these are really just guidelines for that final design. It doesn't have to perfectly match this um, but keep the rules that the, the lines in the corners will be thicker um, and, and taper off more to the center and make sure you don't cover in this part of the image um, with a solid black lines. Now once you think you've got all your black lines, your main lines coloured in and you're happy with your pattern, um, you're going to take your eraser. So the final part is going to be putting in our, um, our greys and also then putting in our highlights that you can see here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a simple lead pencil to show you how you do it. You can also smudge um, uh, some grey. Uh, pastels if you want to soft gray pastels and just practice up in the corner of just shading on the side you want to be able to go a bit darker and then come down and get lighter so that's a gradient. I'm going to get my piece of card now and we're just going to put that over the section that we're not coloring so that it makes it easier. I'm going to start at the top here and I'm going to be darker and then I'm going to get lighter. Now, if you're having trouble with the gradient, you can do it all the same color um, like this on the side, but then you'll go over the top a second coat just at the top. Um, and then we're going to do it on the other side. So I'm going to come across, I'm going to put my card there or your piece of paper. I'm going to lay my pencil down and we're just going to um, grade through there like that. We're going to get lighter and lighter, lines further apart, keeping our pencil on the side. Now don't worry if you go outside the lines, we're going to tidy all this up after. Fantastic. Now what we're going to do is this part here and into the actual container itself. So I'm just going to get you to again lay your pencil on the side, um, start dark at the top and then you want to just become lighter down into the cube covering it all. Now this is the part where some students don't like to get their fingers dirty, um, I don't mind. So what I'm going to do now is show you we're just going to smudge all of that just with our fingers and blend it in. Now it does work with the lead pencil but like I said if you've got soft pastels you might want to use them instead. I'm just going to smudge that in and then we're going to do the same at the top. If you can see this here, there is a very light shadow um, that sits beneath the cube. So we're going to quickly do that. So grab your splat again 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to offset the base of this object. We're just going to draw it again, but sliding it slightly off. Go back to the original position and then just come down back a little bit and you can see the difference there it's not very far back and I'm going to get you to keeping your splat straight up and down I'm going to get you to lightly draw in those two angled lines and then again I'm going to get you to flip that over and it'll look like a diamond but it's actually what it is it's a square um, sitting flat on a surface And then I'm going to get you to tidy it up using your eraser. Again, we're just going to give it a little bit more shade. So it just gives a hint that it's sitting underneath. Now what I'm going to get you to do is tidy up the other sections um, of your cube where you've gone outside. You can use your mask, your little bit of paper if you want. It makes it a bit easier, a bit neater for you to go around and you're going to tidy those up. Careful not to rub out your shadow at the bottom. Next, we're going to make sure that these lines that are very reflective here are, um, are done. Just take my eraser through. Then finally, we're going to put some reflection on. So you might want to, here I've got a couple coming down and then one there, they're, they're um, well spaced um, and they're not identical. So we wanna make sure that um, we're not just covering it with li like lines and lines so it looks like a pattern. It's actually meant to represent um, the reflected light. So I'm just going to do one here and bring it down. If you're using um, like a marker, you need to make sure it's dried first. Goes through all of us and then a smaller one there. Sometimes it's easier if you've got a smaller um, eraser. And then I'm just putting it there. And then across the bottom here, I've got a, um, an angled line where the um, lines hang so we can just put the um, the card or piece of paper on there to mask what we're doing and we can just take the eraser through there like that give it a nice and then a second smaller one at the end and you can go around and tidy that up you just want to soften that you can just use your fingers to rub it and we now have our rendered object that is made from glass I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I will be posting another one that will give you a chance to create an object from around the house um, that's made from glass. So join me for that. Have a go if you would like to try different colors or experiment with your lines. Um, I'd love to see what you end up creating.